Okay, so when you first start using Photoshop CS5, and you go to the bridge, let's go to my other bridge, go to the bridge and you open up a few images. Let's see, I'm just going to pick here some of my favorites. We'll just open three or four images. I'm going to right click and say open. The first thing you notice is it looks like you can only have one image showing at a time because they're all tabbed across the top. And it's kind of frustrating. Now, there's probably a good reason for that and a good purpose, but for me and my workflow, I don't really use that. I like the ability to see multiple images open at one time because I do a lot of composites and layouts. And so I want to be able to drag my images over and see them all at one time. So the tabs don't really work for me. Now, I could pull an image off of that bar and see how it untabs it. And then I could turn, pull that one off and pull that one. And so I'm pulling them off the bar, but if you just pull an image and it's close to the bar of another image, look, it tabs them all inside each other. Wow, that's just not very efficient. So here is how you can turn that off, okay? So I'm going to go to Edit, Preferences, General. And I'm going to change a few things here in a second, but first thing I'm going to do is go to Interface the second tab down, and these are the things you want to change. Open Documents as Tabs, you're going to uncheck that, and Enable Floating Document Window Docking. That's where the images tab inside each other. And you uncheck that, and then say OK. And now, they won't tab within each other, and they won't tab to the bar at the top of the page. OK? That's really helpful. Now the next thing I want to show you is an efficiency thing. So control or command zero fills the screen with your image. Control or command minus, 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 minus makes it smaller. Hmm, doesn't, doesn't change the window size though, so you manually have to change the window down. And control or command plus, 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 well that doesn't work very well either. It makes the image bigger but not the window. Let me show you one other preference that's absolutely amazing. This is something you definitely want to set up. Go to Edit, Preferences, General. This is where we were a second ago in that very first window. See this little one right here in the middle? Zoom resizes windows. Check that. I don't know why it's not checked by default, but if you check that and say OK, now look at the difference. Control, Command, Zero fills the screen. Then control minus, 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 look at that, and plus, plus, plus. It makes each image size down with the window. And so I can take all my images and size them down nice and small, line them up over here, and I can work on composites and do whatever I want. Anytime I want to see it bigger, I just do the plus, controller command plus, or controller command zero to fill the screen. Now, isn't that a major time saver? Literally, this will save you weeks in the course of the year. Just every time you do that, it saves a couple seconds. Those of you who've taken my classes before, you know about how much I like to save seconds because they all add up. So those are the two main things you're going to want to change in your preferences. The things that actually will frustrate everybody, and I get phone calls on all the time. Well, there's actually one more. Let me um, pull up one more thing. Let's just grab another image. I'm going to go with some kind of a... Um, a portrait. Well, this is not a portrait folder, is it? Okay, so we got this cute little girl, and um, let's say we want to use the clone stamp, and if we try to clone on her face, look at this little thing following around. And what that is, is the overlay. And while well, there's a place for that, just doesn't really help you at all when it comes to retouching. It's called the overlay, and what we're going to do is turn it off. So, if you have your clone, if you have your clone source window docked already, you can open it. Or if not, you go to Window Clone Source, and here's your little panel. So in this panel, here's this little checkbox in the middle: Show Overlay. All you have to do is uncheck that. So now my clone is back to normal and I can actually see what I'm doing and it doesn't give me that little overlay like it did a minute ago. That's a really big help. Okay, those are the main things that I get phone calls on all the time and everybody wants to have fixed. 
So what I'm going to do is go through all the preferences all at one fell swoop, and we'll go through them all. You can take notes on that if you want. If you're on a PC, it is Edit Preferences. If you're on a Mac, it's under Photoshop Preferences. So we're going to go to Preferences General. And then the first window, you're going to check Zoom Resizes Windows, like we did just a second ago. And I personally like to use the Shift key for Tool Switch. It's by default. It's on. I'm going to turn it off because it seems to be a little bit faster. Let's say you want to go to the Healing Brush, and the shortcut is J, but it's on the Patch Tool, and that's also J. So... If it's on the wrong one, you have to do Shift J to go to the other one. But if you uncheck this, you just go J, 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 and it cycles through the tools. Or M for marquee, square one, round one, square one, round one. So just M, 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 M until you cycle through the tools. So that's kind of a help. Occasionally it'll get you in trouble, but most of the time it's a help. That's the only thing I change in here. Now when I'm working in Photoshop, um, I do a lot of stuff by the hour. Um, I do uh, retouching and things and graphic design for other photographers. And so I usually turn on the history log, and I make it a text file. I actually have a folder called Photoshop Logs for Time Clock in my personal folder. And then I will name it with today's date. And we'll just do 110205. And now I have this little text file running. So every image that I open up, it'll log it. And when I save it, it'll log it. When I close it, it'll log it. So I can go back and look at that and see exactly how many minutes and seconds I worked on every single file. It is a great way to keep track. It's also a wake-up call for you whenever you're doing your retouching and, you know, you're just going along and you look back and go, wow, I spent a lot more time on that than I thought. So that's good. This is optional, of course. It's just nice to know that it's there. The next window down is Interface. In here, I pretty much leave everything the same, except for the things I showed you a minute ago. Open Documents as Tabs, Enable Floating Window Docking. I turn those off. Now, there's another thing. When you are opening up, let's say, an adjustment layer, you know how the little palette pops up where you make your changes, and when you're done, it doesn't go away? Well, if you want it to go away as soon as you're done with, say, the Curves dialog box or any of those panels, you can check this, Auto Collapse Iconic Panels. And what that will do is automatically close all those panels as soon as you're done working on it. So that's really nice. So just three check marks in this window is everything that needs to be changed. Let's go to File Handling. Pretty much everything is okay here except for this, maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. The default is set to ask. So every time you save a file, it asks you, do you want to um, maximize compatibility? And your answer will always be yes. So why don't you tell this to just always do it and don't ask me anymore? Because it will save you a couple seconds every time you save a file. Okay, so there we go. That's done. In performance, now here's where it tells you how much RAM you have what the ideal range is, and then you can make this slider somewhere within this ideal range. I wouldn't recommend going higher than this because you're likely to start crashing too much. And history and cache is fine. Your scratch disks, you should assign the, the internal drive that has the most free space on it by putting it first. And that way your computer will run the fastest. Let's go to cursors. Now here's a couple new features here. Show only crosshair when painting or show crosshair and brush tips. I actually like to have that. So there's a little X in the middle of my circle. It really helps with aligning on the clone. And my other cursors, instead of standard where it shows the little picture of the tool, I like to do precise. Then I can see the little bullseye of what I'm sampling rather than the picture of the tool. It takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to seeing the little tool but uh, it actually is a lot more precise. So next window, transparency and gamut. This is good. If it's checkerboard, then you can tell it's transparent, and that's what you want. Units and rulers, the default settings are perfect. Guides, grids, and slices, these default settings are also perfect. Plugins, I wouldn't change anything here either. Last one is the type and... 
the only thing I change here is the preview size. Instead of medium, go to go to huge because then you can really see your text. It's a really a big help. So just say okay. Now all my preferences are set. They're going to stay that way as long as I do a normal shutdown on Photoshop. If I actually go along and work a few hours and then my computer crashes, yeah, all that stuff is lost in a crash. So as long as you do a normal shutdown, all those settings will be saved. 